Hi everyone, Mrs V here and today we are going to look at how catalysts influence the rate of chemical reactions. No time to lose, let's get that PowerPoint on and let's get started. In this video tutorial we will discuss how catalysts affect the rate of a reaction. We will also look at how different types of catalysts work. A catalyst is a substance that alters the rate of a chemical reaction without being consumed in the reaction. It's really important to remember a catalyst is a substance. It's not a form of energy. You can't say heat was a catalyst that increased reaction rate. Heat can't be a catalyst because heat is not a substance. Catalysts can work in different ways. It might pull the reactants onto its surface to allow them to react or it might react with one of the reactants but then get regenerated at the end of the reaction. What's important is the rate of reaction changed and at the end of the reaction the catalyst was still there, unchanged by the reaction. The way a catalyst speeds up a chemical reaction is by lowering the activation energy. It provides a way for the reaction to occur with less energy. An alternative pathway is how we say this. You can show this on an energy profile diagram by showing the transition state at a lower energy level. You can show this on a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution by drawing the activation energy line at a lower energy. You can see on the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution that if the activation energy is lower, a larger proportion of particles have enough energy for effective collision. Remember the way we say this is a greater proportion of collisions will be between particles whose sum of kinetic energy is greater than or equal to the activation energy of the reaction. Catalysts achieve this increase in effective collisions in different ways depending on which type of catalyst it is. We are going to look at acid-base catalysts, surface catalysts and enzymes. Acid-base catalysts either donate or remove a proton from one of the reactants. This usually makes it more likely that the reactive site on the reactant is going to collide with that other reactant. This example shows the use of an acid catalyst in the reaction between an alkene, that's a hydrocarbon with a double bond, and water. What needs to happen in this reaction is that the oxygen from the water molecule needs to come and bond with this carbon here. This produces an intermediate molecule called a carbocation. Now that there is a positive charge, the oxygen end of the water molecule will be attracted to the carbocation so it's more likely to collide correctly and form a bond. But now the oxygen has a positive charge. So when a water molecule in the solvent comes along, it can bond to one of the hydrogens. This reforms the hydronium ion, which is the acid catalyst. The catalyst has been regenerated at the end of the reaction and products have been formed. Surface catalysts like platinum are metals. Remember we learned about the electron C model of a metal. And those delocalized electrons on the metal surface allow molecules to be adsorbed. It's important to know the difference between absorb and adsorb. When a molecule is adsorbed, it's stuck to the surface, but it's not taken into the metal structure. So here we see molecules just stuck to the surface. They're not going into the structure, they're staying on the surface. Once adsorbed, the bonds can break easily and the atoms are able to move around on the surface. Here we're looking at the Haber process, the reaction of nitrogen and hydrogen to make ammonia. The nitrogen and hydrogen are adsorbed onto the catalyst, the bonds break, and the nitrogen and hydrogen atoms recombine on the surface to produce ammonia. The catalytic converter in a car exhaust works using a platinum, palladium, and rhodium catalyst. These catalysts are finely divided to make sure that they have a really large surface area. The pollutants carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides, and unburnt hydrocarbons undergo reactions with oxygen, and they produce the harmless gases, nitrogen and water vapor, as well as carbon dioxide. In the second diagram, we see oxygen adsorbed on the catalyst, Carbon monoxide is adsorbed and reacts with the oxygen atom to make carbon dioxide. Enzymes are catalysts for biological reactions. They speed up reactions. In some cases, enzymes can make a chemical reaction millions of times faster than it could occur just on its own. Biological molecules are very large, and it's highly unlikely that reactive parts of the molecule will collide just by chance. 
Enzymes themselves are made of proteins that are folded into complicated shapes. The enzyme holds the molecules in the correct orientation for the new bonds to form. Usually the enzyme is shown to have a certain shaped hole that the reactant molecule fits in. This represents certain types of secondary bonds that bind the reactant to the enzyme. Once the new bonds have formed, the product is released from the enzyme and the enzyme can then take in more reactant molecules. In summary, a catalyst lowers the activation energy for a chemical reaction and this increases the proportion of effective collisions and this increases the rate of reaction. Well, I hope you found that video useful. If so, please give it a like and also subscribe to my channel. Keep learning more about this wonderful subject of chemistry. I'm going to see you guys in the next video.